Good morning, everybody. I uh, wasn't planning on starting a video today. Ho! Oh, it'll be a few days. Well, I'm not sure when it come out. Ho! Oh, but ho! Oh, this is the day after I had hitched these two up together for the first time to drive them around, and I just tied them to the sled on the onto the by the barn. And I wasn't going to. I didn't pull a sled with them then. I wasn't going to pull it with them today. I was just going to exercise them. I wasn't going to do a video. And uh, but uh, they were standing there, and I said, you know, I'm going to try it. So I started around the corner of the barn, and I said, well, I better. I better call Brenda see if she come out and film this because I wanted to show you the full process of what's going on. And so, so here we are and here we're going. I cuffed up, cuffed up. I wasn't sure if I wanted to start actually pulling something this heavy. I was debating about using this and or using the a cart and uh, this pulls pretty hard and I haven't even adjusted my evener so they're actually pulling in both the same amount and uh, as you can see Baron is lacking lagging behind quite a bit but that's okay it's understandable oh oh and uh, but I'm really pleased how well he's pulling it um, so let me explain a few things on a sled as opposed to a cart when you're training colts. Um, this sled is so nice, especially in the winter time because it's on snow and all, but it's just kind of one of these, I'm not gonna say indestructible things, but it's very difficult for a horse to, to break this. Um, yeah, so, but that's one good thing about when you're using a colt. Um, also, if it's on dry ground, especially if they start to run, they're not going to run for a long time with this. A colt's not because they don't know how to work. They don't have the muscles. And so it tires them out fast. Oh, that's a good thing and a bad thing. When you're using this with a colt, you have to realize that and just use them very little um, because you'll tire them out so fast on something this heavy. Um, but it's still just a great thing to use. The problem with this is some colts won't even pull and you've got to, it takes a process just to teach them to pull and even as simple as a sled. Um, so with a colt like that, you're better off with a two-wheeled cart. Um, but I, and like I said, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was debating and then just all of a sudden this morning, I said, I'm just going to try them a little bit and just see what happens. And they pulled it. So I'm really pleased. So I'm actually just going to go around the one more time and that's all they'll do for today. Cast out. I actually was going to do this training process quite a bit differently, but things have progressed, been progressingly extremely, extremely well. And so I'm actually not doing a few things that I normally would have done. And if you'd see that even to see how far behind he is, he's way behind and that's not surprising. Um, I'm gonna crack him just to get him up there a little bit, just so he knows he's gotta be up there. Oh. Oh, um, but anyways, what I had planned on doing, what I would normally have done is I would have taken him still driving single and had him pull something like a tire or something light behind him to get used to that dragging noise. Cause sometimes some horses would be pretty freaking out when they, when they are pulling dragging something like this, the noise behind him would freak them out. It doesn't seem to bother him at all. Um, he's doing excellent as far as that goes. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, ho, ho. I'm very pleased. As, I, as he was tied there to the truck body, he was doing a lot of jerking, you know, pulling ahead. And every time he did, he pulled the sled. So it, I knew that he, you know, he was able to do it with Ken's help, of course. And so I cast out, cast out. A whip would be really nice right now. And I have one, but it's not long enough to reach him because I'm quite a long ways from him. So I have to just depend on using the lines and, ha and, and hopefully using good judgment to know how far to pull it uh, and you know for how long. But I'm not definitely not going to pull it very long. I'm going to this will be my last time around for today and that's all we'll do with him for today. But my goodness, I am just thrilled as to well how, how well he's doing. Oh, 
Oh, what do you think, Brenda? He's doing amazing. He is. So now that he, now that I know he can pull this, this is going to be the the implement that I'm going to be using with them. Um, I wish I could just work them every single day, but that's just not going to happen. I just have too many things to do. Um, but now I at least know that next time I come out, which hopefully won't be too much longer, I will hitch them right onto the sled and and I can actually go right out around the field. If by keeping them in the, the green grass or just the grass in general, it slides so much easier than if it's on dry dirt. You know, it's a lot less friction. Yeah, I was so. looking to see if like he's breathing hard, he's not. Oh no. So he's doing great with it. Better than just right, Baron? I caps down. Sometimes you can take advantage of his foolishness. Now he get, gets anxious like that. Um, sometimes I'll make him just stop and stand there, but sometimes I'll, I'll take advantage of that anxiousness and, and ask him to go right when he's getting anxious so that he will go and start easier um, without have, me having to hit him. Fortunately, for some reason, the, the colts, none of the cows are out here to pasture, so they're not bothering us. They're doing so well, I, I could most definitely go more than twice around, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to drive right back over the truck body, unhitch them, and that's it for the day. So I'm very pleased with it. Maybe later in the video, we could throw on, show a few of these horses on the scales to give you an update as to how much they're weighing. I'm quite curious how much he's, he weighs now since we've had him for several months. Even though he doesn't look that big, I bet he's, I bet he can surprise you on how heavy he is. So we're gonna drive right up to the truck body. And uh, it's very nice, because when I, when I tap him a little bit, he usually jumps ahead. Oh, 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 good boy. Oh, good boy. So I'm just gonna tie him to his halter and unhitch him. Okay. Back up here. Like I said, I had no intention of doing a video this today, but I just I just felt they were it was time for them to try the sled and and away we went. So I'm glad Brenda was home to be able to come out and video this because I really wanted to show you the whole process. Cast out. Cast out. Careful. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's it for now. We'll see what else comes up in the course of this day or one of the days, next few days. Well, good morning. We're back at it again this morning. It's been several days since I've hitched those horses up. Um, and uh, I did go out, let's see, this is Monday. I think that was Friday when I filmed going around the first time with, the, with Baron. And then on Saturday, I took them around, actually partial around the field, and they did really, really good. Um, this morning, I'm gonna hitch them back up again. I want to weigh them up first, and a few of the odds and ends, and so I will explain what we're doing as we go along. Uh, Brenda is in here right now, brushing Baron. Hi. And uh, we have him in here, because that's where he's kinda gotta be at this time. Last night, him and the blacks were inside, and he was in one in Bill's stall. This morning, I brought in Bill and Lady, and uh, we will, I think, I guess what I'm gonna do is kick Buck outside so he can have his exercise, because I'm gonna be working Baron and Ken, and later on, today, actually, it's supposed to rain here this morning and rain all day, so we, that's why I wanna get going early and get them around the field one time to get their little bit of exercise and training in on Baron. And so then they'll go outside also, but right now I'm gonna put, Buck out so Baron can come into Buckstall because it's just easier for me to harness him in there. 
and we'll get the barns clean and get them weighed up. So now we have Baron and Buck stall and um, Jim's got the skid steers coming our way and I'll just show you his reaction um, when the skid steer goes by. just one of one more thing that he is needing to learn being part of the horse barn in the horse barn and part of the, this group now and he seems to be doing really well here comes Baron hey, Come here. oops that's my hey. phone Great idea, but come here. Come here. hey, hey, Baron. Come 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 Oh. Huh? 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 That is like huh? perfect right there. 1600. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Guess that's pretty accurate. Am I guessing? Yeah. So now we're going to weigh up can. This is beautiful. Oh. Is that it? 1900. That's 2000. Oh. That's, hey. that's 18. Hey. Yeah, definitely not that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hey. So we're into the 1900 pound mark. We'll see how far we go with that. Looks like he's around 1850. 18? No, 1950. Sorry. 1950. 1950. Yeah. That sounds about right. That's about yeah, what it was last time I read them. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Come here. Come here, yes, yes. Oop. That's been over. Come here. Kind of congested in here, but they did really well. Okay, we're all hitched up and ready to go. I wanted to show you one thing before I get going. On my last video, I had tried to explain um, the problems with if a horse, when you're line driving them, if you got one horse and he goes way ahead of the other horse, you have the risk of the buckle going through the ring and let me explain what that means and and what i've done to stop that from happening i'm going to keep this door partially shut just to keep him where he belongs okay so this is the buckle i'm talking about what could potentially happen if one horse is going ahead this buckle could actually get pulled through here it's hard to believe it can but it most definitely can get pulled through here like that okay and then as i'm pulling on this line i can't get it back through this ring very big disaster in the making so what I've done over here is we had these made up. They're just, just a piece of leather. And what it does, it makes a lot smaller hole here than this big ring. So as, say for example, if Ken was to go way ahead of Baron, 
this line would be pulling ahead and bearing would have stopped for some reason, this buckle cannot slide through that ring because of this piece of leather with a lot smaller hole there that, that the buckle cannot fit through. It's just a huge safety precaution thing. So that's what I wanted to show you. And so a lot of you guys already know that and, and actually use such things. There's other things other than just, I've, I've seen some people use a smaller ring here. A few different ways to make that happen. Okay, so it's gonna rain very soon. So we are gonna get hitched on. All I wanna do is get around the field one time for a uh, lesson for Baron. And uh, he's, I think it worked just today and he's kind of antsy this morning. So let's, let's get at it. Is there a name for that thing right there? I have no idea. There probably is, but I don't know what it is. Okay. So he's quite antsy this morning. So I got him unhitched and I'm gonna just quick run back through and grab my lines so that I have control of them. Huh? 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 No. Huh? 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 I cap step. Cap step. I didn't have time or take time to tie my lines up. But he just needs to get walking and he will be just fine. So I'm just gonna go out here just a little ways and swing around and hitch onto the sled. Ah, we can. Ha. 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 Careful. Ah, we. Oh. Oh. No. 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 puddle wherever we go here today we got a lot of rain and we're supposed to get more If you noticed it but his butt is closer to where it should be this is the third time i think one two fourth time i've hitched him on the sled and how he's improving already just he's not fighting that tug and not trying to slide his butt out all the time he's staying in place way better and this is even after a day of not doing anything pipe can pipe can I still have the evener hitched even, so they're in the same spot on the evener, so the, the, both horses are pulling the same amount of weight. And by good rights, I really should change that. I should actually put this bolt right here and slide this whipple tree way out to this last hole because um, for one, he's a colt, and for two, as we just found out weighing them up, there is 350 pounds difference in weight. So having this offset would be a very wise thing to do. Um, but I'm just not going to because it's not really necessary for just pulling a light load like this. So I'm gonna hand hitch him, quick come back. And I've been having a little bit of trouble getting them away from the truck body. We're gonna go right through that mud puddle in the process. So instead of standing on the sled, I actually step down beside Baron so that I can tap him a little bit if need be. I cast out. Cast out.
Right and jump on if you want. Brenda's gonna jump right on and ride for a little while. Everything's so wet, she'll get soaked. Although she does have her boots on. But um, because, because it is Monday morning, they both are feeling good and fresh. And uh, because everything is so wet, everything slides a lot easier. I told her she might as well jump right on if she wants. Because we're just gonna make one loop around. And a day like this when it's gonna be raining, I'm just happy to be able to get even the one time around. And here, here comes the boys. That's cute. Oh, yeah. It's cute, but it's not cute. Um, because he's going to be right next to the fence. Oh. So like I said, this is Monday. Oh. Uh, this is Monday. I didn't work them yesterday. On Friday is when I showed, the, was the first part of this video. On Saturday, I hitched them up and I took them around to my cornfield and the whole loop around and I didn't even stop them at all. Um, they just did that well. I decided I'm just gonna keep right on walking. Today would be a good thing to not stop too much in some ways because he's kind of rambunctious and wants to go more than he would normally. Um, but whenever it's so important to teach them to stop and to stand and now partially because of the time he spent on at the truck body he knows how to stand so much better i kept that but he is definitely ready to go got a lot of spunk in his step this morning but yet after he goes just a little ways he kind of uh slows right down and drives behind because he just has no muscles in those legs yet and no, he doesn't have what, what he needs between his ears either. I think what I'm going to do is, I don't know, I'm going to turn here. Javier, 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 Javier. We have some visitors Javier. here. They're at the, in the cornfield at the fence line, and they probably wouldn't bother, but I don't think I want to fight with it, the chance of it bothering. So I'm going to come turn right here and make my loop a little bit shorter than I planned. And, uh, go up this side of the field. As you can see, he's really lagging behind going up this little hill. Uh, it's, it's amazing uh, how long it takes to train a horse and how to, long to get him to be strong enough to do jobs like this. Oh, I wanna explain a few things. Out here, where the colts are, that's the cornfield. You've probably seen in other videos how I put the cows out in the cornfield to, to chew that all down. This piece right beside us is a new seeding that I seeded down this spring. I cut it once and I round bailed and wrapped it. Um, this I'd like to get cut again, but I'm kind of possibly waiting until the, if we have a frost and then I'll cut it and we'll round bale and wrap it. Um, just because it's better for the, for the, for everything if you, if you wait to a frost in this situation. Otherwise it needs a few weeks of regrowth before the frost hits. So I kept stop. Kept stop. I am trying to, to show and to, to share my experience with training Baron and my other colts too, um, so that it might be a help to somebody that's training their horses. Um, some of the things that you're gonna be seeing with him are probably gonna happen when you're training your horses. Um, for example, like I've said many times, if you watch the evener, which I am one to watch a lot, even on my big horses, um, I want the evener to go straight across to be even. That's why it's called an evener. And it is not right now. Um, Baron is dragging behind quite a bit. And that is, that is normal. Um, but you need to strive to get him. Oops, there's a rock I've been going to pick up. Uh, you need to strive to get him to walk even with the horse beside him. And he will in time. But uh, right now, it's, uh, it's still a learning process. Now, a lot of people have asked when I'm actually going to put him to actual work, other than just training and exercises. Um, at this stage in his training, he could be, there's more that he could be doing. He could be, if it was in the middle of the summertime, um, I could put him on a rake or a tether and do some fairly long walker with him. He's old enough now, that could be done. Um, but I still, 
I'm not one to do that. I like to get wait until they're four years old before I do a lot of that stuff. It's just the muscles um, and their bones just have not matured enough to really do a lot of work. Now, I know a lot of people do do that, but I, I just don't. So, I'm curious to see what the colts are going to do when I swing in by this other fence. Baron has his eyes over there. Come up. And I'm going to just keep rolling and hopefully they'll stay where they're at and not bother, bother us. And we'll head for home because it's starting to rain. As we swing this corner, Ken knows we're headed back to the barn and thinking and probably hoping that he's done for the day. Um, and Baron just does not even know and understand that, so he's lagging behind quite a bit. Can I ask you a question? Sure can. Your whipple tree and your evener, do they ever get like, um, you know how he's so far behind? Yeah. Do they get hooked in together and does that cause any problems? Um, generally no. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what you mean by hooked in together. I don't see how Well, they're... like, I know from when, when, when I'm hitching evener, like they, sometimes it kind of gets underneath and it's hard to move it. Yeah, but like that's because no... it's underneath the stone bolt. Come on, come on, Baron. Get up there. Yeah, so it's not an issue. Yeah, let me stand over here because yeah. I can put more pressure on Ken's side. It's funny how now Baron is so much more behind. Right. I think but, it's because he's tired. But it's, it's partially because Ken is picking up speed because he's headed back to the barn. Um, he also, we've had a lot of wet weather. So he has not been working much at all. None of my horses have really. And so um, they, he's just, he's, he's got a lot of energy and he could go, go, go. And he's, he's also a bit on the lazy side. So he's no thinking that we're heading back to the barn, he's gonna be all done. So let's just get it done with. <laughs> but uh, it makes it hard to train a whole course a colt when he's doing this um but this is this is there again one more thing you got to um deal with when you're training your colt if you're training them with no matter what horse you're training them with you're not always going to have a horse that's going to work perfect now if i work ken just a little bit more he'd be perfect but but today right now i'm not liking what he's doing but i can live with it why don't you say most horses when they're headed back to the barn do this uh, no, only when they're really energetic. If when they're tired, they don't. We got a problem here with the fence. Oh dear. I think there's a fence post in here. It's supposed to be. I think it's right where it's down right there. There's a fence post. So jump over there if you could please and pick that up. <laughs> fix that. Hi guys. Oh. Cut stop. We'll have to run back to get another fence post. I'll just walk the side. Uh, we get up here. I'm going to stop and talk about the his mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hey. 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 Okay, I want to show you something on Baron. Hey. So, when you're training a colt, um, you have put a bit in their mouths, and they've never had that in their mouths. And a bit is, is a little bit, can be a little bit harsh on their mouth, and their mouths have to actually be calloused up before um, they can really be good with the bit. It's like you, when you go out and do work, uh, and your hands will get very sore and will get um, blisters on them. And, but the, you will build calluses over time. So I'm gonna show you something with his. This is not at all unusual. A lot of horses will do it differently, of course. But I wanna show you the outside to start with. You see there's nothing there, there's not a mark there, okay? Clean as can be. But on the inside of his mouth, it is red. Can you see that? Yeah, there's, yeah. So that's just a, a sign that for, for a couple things, um, He's actually doing a lot of turning towards Ken, which a colt will do, a stud especially will do that. And so I'm pulling on the right-hand line probably more than the left-hand line. It's more pressure on that. And so because of that, 
it is making that sore than this side here. You said on the inside of the mouth. You mean on the inside of his head, but not I'm, on the outside I'm of his... I'm saying the inside of the team. Yeah. So this his inside, mm -hmm. right here. And you can see that red, red mark. Yeah. Um, so yes, it's sore, but um, that will get toughened up and stop being sore after a period of time. I guess I wanted to share that with you because if you have a colt and you're gonna start training them, this very well might happen. And I don't want you to freak out that he's got a sore mouth. Um, just understand that that mouth has to be toughened up and has to have calluses so that, just like your hands, so that like Ken, he works all the time and he has not a mark on his, on his mouth at all um, because he's been calloused up, his, his mouth is used to it. Apple G. Oh. <coughs> oh. Yep. Okay, it is definitely starting to rain. We've been hearing some thunder. We're going to put these horses away and be done for the day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay dry and have a great day. Cuff stop. Hey, get up there. Get up there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. 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 Ho. Oh. Oh. Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. Ho. Oh. Cast that G, G, G. Oh. Oh. We made it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, bye. Bang up here. Oh. <sighs> Okay, cap. Hey, what? Hey, man. Okay, can. Come on in. Can. Come on. Can. Come on. Well, stand there. I don't care. Get on. Get, 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 get. No, he's going to be bad and get into the hay. <clears throat> Come on, Kenny. Tank run. <clears throat> Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Get in. Get. 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 